So I thought we got to a convenient point on engine building that I've built half of this engine. Um, so I thought it makes sense to show you sort of how these things work and keeping it again, fairly simple. So we've got our pistons um, that as we know, they basically just go up and down. So it's called the Otto cycle by the uh, named after the guy invented it. So you've got a four stroke engine. So you've got an induction, a compression, a power and exhaust. So the piston goes down, it draws the mixture in through the carburetors up here. It comes up again, it compresses the petrol air mixture. The spark plug in the top sets light to it. That explosion of the fuel pushes the piston back down again, which is your power stroke. And then as it comes up again, the exhaust valve opens and it blows all the soot out of the exhaust. So that's your basic sort of four stroke engine. So what we need to do, I was gonna talk about cam timing. So obviously the pistons are, are set. They just go up and down in relation to the design of the crankshaft. So if we come around here, obviously we've got the camshafts going round. So these lobes, as we know, open and close the valves, which allow the, in, no, the fuel air mixture to come in and the exhaust to go out. And they're driven by belts off the um, crankshaft. So what we've got to do is, is set the timing as to when, when the valves open in relation to pist piston um, position. And that's where the auto cycle was developed. So as you can see, if I turn the engine over, you can see the pistons are going up and down. And you can see the protractor at the end, which I've got a, a marker there, which gives me the degrees of rotation of the crankshaft. So that'll tell me where the, the crankshaft is. And if you come around this side, By rigging some DTI gauges up to the piston, the valve buckets, it gives me, if I just twiddle this, it'll give me an accurate point. When the, when the gauge starts to move, you can see when the valve starts to open. So these are basically very accurate gauges that when the, when the pin moves, these, you can see these are super accurate. They go, go around a lot. So this will tell me when the, when the cam starts to move and then I can read off when it starts to move on my protractor on the crankshaft. So now we come to the numbers bit. So we know that the piston goes down, so you've got a top dead centre and a bottom dead centre, when it's at the top, when it's at the bottom. So as the piston goes down, when do you need the, say, the inlet cam to open? So as the piston's going down, the inlet cam needs to open and let the piston suck in the fuel-air mixture. And then as it goes round to the bottom, and starts to come up again, obviously the inlet cam start, needs to shut to allow the, the gases to be compressed. So it's the degrees of rotation of the crankshaft as to when the valves open and close. Right, so this is where it gets a bit more complicated. Now there's lots of ways of doing this. Um, there's several ways of measuring it. You can measure when valves open, when valves close. You can measure um, maximum lift at top dead center. So there's various, numbers that and pe all people do these different ways obviously when this has got standard cams in it um, so it's at some stage when you build engines if you do race engines or anything you can play around on dynos and you can move cam timing a little bit this way a little bit that way and see if it, it makes a, a difference to the the power of the engine now that takes an awful long time so if you because we know of this one it's got original cam so we're going to stick with the original cam timing so someone else has already spent hours and hours and hours on an engine dyno working out what the optimum cam timing is on this engine so by looking in the manual this tells me that the inlet valve opens 30 degrees before top dead center so by turning the engine over when my dial gauge starts to move up here i can measure off where it is so i know that 30 degrees so that's top dead center and the engine turns clockwise but as that comes through, when this gauge reads 30, the inlet valve should just be opening. So how do you change the relationship between the cams and the crankshaft? Now there's several ways on a normal sort of what you call hatchback or your no, normal car, it's all fixed, this doesn't have to move. Any sort of fairly sensible engine, race engine or whatever, there's gotta be a way of, of moving the relationship between the cams and the, the crankshaft. Now Ferrari do it with little pegs in in holes. So if you need to move the cam round slightly, you can change which peg it goes in, which gives you about four degrees each, each hole to move that around. Some of them have pinch bolts. It's like a, a nut and bolt set up that you can move it and tighten it up again. 
Um, so there's various ways of doing it, but most of the Ferrari stuff that I've come across, pretty much all of it through the 60s, is, is some sort of peg type arrangement that you take the peg out, move the gear around a little bit, put it in another peg, reset it all up and see whether you're closer to the desired number. So what Ferrari also give us, because we're standard cams, now not any other cam doesn't get the, the original factory marks, but I now know that if I set the flow, the crankshaft up to zero, so that's top dead centre firing cylinder number one, the factory marks on these you actually get, if I take this dial gauge out of the way, you can see it better. I'll lift that out, you can see there's a little mark on the cap and a mark on the camshaft. So now I know I've set this, this one up to the correct factory figures. The belt and braces is when you turn it over, when that's on TDC, the timing marks line up, which is just a, a belt and braces of, of double checking everything. So I hope that makes some, without getting, some people make this far more complicated than it is. And it is easier if you're doing standard camshafts that you've got the data to go with. Otherwise you really are into um, working it out on dynos. Um, there's other ways of doing it, but factory stuff is keep it to the data. Every cam will be different, even in Ferrari land. GT4s are different to GTBs, carburetor ones are different to injections. They're all different. It's also quite a nice chance for, for, to show that here's half an engine. So we've got uh, fuel going in this side. You can see the exhaust coming out and the pistons sitting this side. And I, I do think these are very pretty engines. One thing Ferrari do do is make very pretty engines.